Ladies, gentlemen, and barbarians of all ages, Season 3 is coming up for Diablo 4 in just a couple of days, really. And I know there's a hell of a lot of you, a lot of us even, that are excited to just get in there and smash some stuff. This last week, we've been given a ton of new information about Season 3 itself for the game, and also about Barbarian and what to expect as far as changes, nerfs, and buffs. And so we're going to use all this information to put together our ideal leveling build for Barbarian in Season 3 to help you get your way up into World Tier 3 and even even level 50 as fast as we physically can when the season starts, even on a class that is generally considered to be comparatively slower at leveling than the others. The big contender for leveling this time around, and what we're going with here, is of course Upheaval. Upheaval worked decently well for leveling last season, but I'd argue that Hammer the Ancients was better. That skill, however, was nerfed though in this patch, and so now Upheaval is pretty undeniably here as the focus of our build. The other big fun thing that we do get to do though here is that this build now uses Charge, especially so we can properly see the this ridiculous damage increase that they gave it. 900% more effective than it used to be, basically 10 times the damage. So let's dive into the build as a whole, talk about the skill points that we use to make this work, the plans for our expertise and technique slot once you have them unlocked, our legendary slots of note as well, with of course a disclaimer that we are only including three legendary effects in the build, as you can put aspects onto your jewelry while leveling, and you don't need to change out your jewelry slots too often without hurting your power levels much. And of course, those legendaries are chosen from the pool of aspects that you can get in your Codex guaranteed, so that you are guaranteed able to actually have them within an hour or two of starting the season, rather than relying on RNG. Then finally we'll round it off talking about our plans for our Shenasol companion upgrades, and also talking about how to actually play the build itself. One more quick disclaimer before beginning here then, obviously the background footage that is going on here is on the current patch of the game, and I am level 100, but I'm doing my best to sort of recreate the build concept and legendaries in use, so you can at least see the general flow and concept of it, even if it is quite different from what we'll actually have on Tuesday the way that it plays, which is what I've theorycrafted this around, of course. Starting off with the skill points themselves then, we're going to have one point into Lunging Strike, mostly just to give us a basic skill that always has forward momentum, tracking us onto our target and increasing our speed in a way. We also grab Enhanced Lunging Strike here for 30% bonus damage and some healing if it hits a healthy enemy, then Battle Lunging Strike over here, which also makes it apply 20% of its damage as a bleed. Then we move on to our core skills over here and grab our first rank of Upheaval, our core skill for the build. We also grab Enhanced Upheaval over here, which gives us a 20% stun chance on it as well, and then Furious Upheaval, which increases the damage by up to 72% based on how many instances of non-upheaval damage that you can do between casts, which makes it great for leveling and weirdly effective when you have less fury generation as well. On which note, we're going to be grabbing three ranks of Endless Fury here for 21% increased fury generation on basic skills used with two-handed weapons, then we're going to be taking one rank in the Ground Stomp skill for an AoE stun, which is quite nice to have. We're also taking an Enhanced Ground Stomp for one second duration increase on it, and then Tactical Ground Stomp, which makes it gives us 40 Fury when we cast it, which is an absolutely massive bomb of Fury, and of course, Fury Generation is the main bottleneck that Barb really has early on, so leaving that in any way possible is wonderful. Then we're going to be grabbing Rally and Cry over here for our first shout, a boost in movement speed and resource generation when used, also granting Unstoppable with Enhanced Rally and Cry over here. Then we also grab Tactical Rally and Cry, which makes it give us 20 bonus Fury just in general, but also bonus resource generation while active. Then we're going to be grabbing three ranks of the Imposing Presence passive for 18% additional maximum life, and then three ranks of Martial Vigor for 12% bonus damage reduction from Elites. After that, we move on to the Brawling Cluster, and we're going to be taking Warcry over here for our second shout, increasing damage done for a few seconds after casting, Enhanced Warcry here for making it also grant Berserking for four seconds too, and Power Warcry here, which makes it give us a bonus damage increase if there are enough enemies surrounding you. After that, we have to grab our fun new toy in Charge down here, which is actually replacing our third shout in this build, as crazy as that sounds. This gives you unstoppable when cast, as well as doing quite respectable damage now. We also take enhanced charge over here for bonus damage to enemies that bounce into terrain, and then power charge to reduce its cooldown per enemy hit. On the tooltip in the current build, it says per enemy hit into terrain. That part's going to be removed in the new patch. It's just per enemy hit, which is fantastic. Three seconds per enemy up to nine max, with a six second reduction being added as well when you hit a boss with charge. Then we're going to be rounding back and sticking four more ranks into upheaval itself, to get it to its maximum ranks of five. Of course, any bonus ranks you can get from your gloves or anything else are very welcome. Then we're going to be doing the exact same thing for charge, putting up to five out of five as well. After that, we're going to be taking three ranks of the booming voice passive here to increase the duration of our shouts, three ranks of raid leader to heal yourself and any allies in the radius while your shouts are active, then three ranks of guttural yell just for a nice bit of damage reduction for five seconds after casting a shout, which by the way is going to be active, then it probably would be in most builds that you'd play like this really. Then our final 
passives in this cluster are going to be three ranks of swiftness just for a nice bit of bonus movement speed because, well, that's just another area that Barb struggles in earlier on normally. Then in our weapon mastery cluster, we're going to be taking exclusively passives, three ranks of the pit fighter passive over here for bonus damage to close enemies and damage reduction from distant enemies, three ranks of thick skin for a good amount of maximum life as fortify whenever you take damage, one rank of defensive stance for increased damage reduction while well fortified, and then three ranks of counter offensive for 12% increased damage when you have more than 50% of your maximum life as fortified. Then for your final point of skill, you want to put it into your actual key passive, of course, which we're going to be taking Unbridled Rage for 135% increased damage from your core skills, but 100% extra cost. It's just way too good to ignore if you can get the Fury Generation to make it actually work as a base. With that then, let's talk weapon selection and your actual technique. Your main goal really is to get a nice two-handed bludgeoning weapon and upgrade it as often as possible, as this will be your main damage source as it's required for upheaval. For charge on lunging strike, you just want to apply whichever of your two-handed weapons has the highest damage stat, simple as that. For your technique slot, once you have that unlocked, we actually want to have the two-handed sword in here for 20% of direct damage applied as bleed damage. As you get into higher levels, you want to change it over to the two-handed axe expertise, but for now, we don't really have a consistent way to apply vulnerable application in the low-level version of the build, so sword technique is absolutely better. Then we need to talk about legendaries, specifically our three aspects of choice today, as that is the most that I'm happy to recommend in a leveling build, as you can apply them to jewelry and not have to replace them all that often without really losing any power. Again, worth noting that I'm only going from the pool of legendaries available in the Codex of Power, and that there are legendaries that boost this build more than these, or even just make other builds worth using if you happen to find them before like level 50, it is just pure RNG to get anything else really. This is just the best that you can get for guarantee. Our amulet legendary then for 50% bonus power is of course going to be the edge masters aspect. This just gives you a bunch of bonus damage on every skill that you cast, depending on the amount of your maximum resource that you have filled up. And we're going to be filling our resources up a pretty good amount with this, just because that's how it sort of played around the cycle of upheaval and wanting to get other skills in between with the variant of upheaval that we've taken. Our second legendary aspect then, which is going to be on the ring, is going to be the aspect of echoing fury. This generates fury per second while a shout skill is active. In the current build of the game, you can see it says two per second, but in the actual patch that this will be effective on, it's going to be six to 10 fury per second, six being the absolute minimum, and it will no longer actually stack with multiple shouts on, which is how it used to work, and that was how we used shouts before as a result. So now we're going to change the way that we use shouts, but this aspect is still absolutely worth using even with the change, especially early on. This one comes from Sirocco Caverns. Then finally, we have the aspect of the expectant over here, which will actually give you bonus damage with your next core skill within five seconds of using basic skills by up to 30%, just a really nice bonus that will consistently activate for our upheaval uses. With that cover then, the only really new thing left for a leveling style build is to talk about the brand new seasonal mechanic, the Seneschal Construct, our companion. You can build this with two governing stones, which act as skills, and each one of those skills can have three tuning stones each, which augment their respective skill. We don't know exactly how hard or easy it will be to unlock most of these yet, so take this with a grain of salt, as some might turn out harder to get than we expect, but these are the ideal ones that I imagine to be available relatively early on. For governing stones, you want Flash of Adrenaline. This makes the construct give the player itself bonus damage for duration. This also does affect the construct as construct scales off of your player's stats, so this is just really solid. On this, I have attached the Safeguard Tuning Stone, which gives you damage reduction when the skill triggers, duration support to increase the duration of the skill by 4.4 seconds, and tactical support to decrease the cooldown of it. Then we have the Lightning Bolt Governing Stone for a range skill that chains between enemies, and on this one we have efficiency support for 15% increased critical chance on the player on each target hit for 3 seconds after being hit. Crit chance is hard to come by early on, so this is really lovely to have. Mockery support, which causes this skill's damage to taunt enemies nearby for 4 seconds, which is lovely for control purposes. And then gripping support, damage and effects to distant enemies pulls them into the construct. This just gives us a nice consistent form of pull utility that we will aim to create ourselves, of course, at a higher level, but something that we severely lack while we're leveling. So if we can get this early on our companion, that will be excellent. And it mostly just exists to increase our quality of life and our speed, really. And that just about covers all the things that you need to know to actually make the build then, so let's talk about just playing it. Essentially, your biggest bottleneck just the entire way through is just the way that Bar Barbarian works early on is resource generation, but we are purposefully playing around that being a thing. Echoing Fury has been changed in the recent patch, and in Season 3 will no longer have its effects stack with multiple shouts, which means the ideal way to use shouts in this build is not actually to spam both together, as we used to do, but actually to spread them out, to try and only have one active at a time. This way you spread out the resource generation 
protection from Echoing Fury much more effectively. Past that, you want to use Charge on cooldown pretty much, ideally at high or maximum fury though, and you want to aim it to hit as many enemies as possible as it does ridiculously good damage of the actual patch hitting now. Awkwardly, the background footage is of course in current game state, but imagine Charge doing pretty much just 10 times the damage every time that I use it right now, and also being cast at least three times as often. On top of that, as part of the patch, we also get three seconds of cooldown reduction per enemy hit, up to nine seconds maximum, six second reduction for hitting a boss. But with the five ranks that we have in it, that puts it around a 13 second cooldown. Nine second reduction from hitting three enemies makes it a four second cooldown pretty consistently, even while leveling, which makes it actually very reliable as a damaging tool. Then after you use charge, because you want charge to be boosted by your edge master, you want to then cast upheaval to spend your resources and get its lovely boost from all the non-upheaval damage you did before casting. It's just a really nice cyclical build that has essentially been made properly effective as a result of the changes in the patch, and that's what I'd really love to see, honestly. A meaningfully different build from last season that promises to be more effective, so what more can we really ask for, at least when it comes to leveling, right? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye